being on the other side of things, so um, it's kind of weird. It's humbling to see that anybody showed up. Jason, you lied. Jason, sent, Jason was the first one to register, and he sent me an email that says, it's just going to be us. <laughs> Damn, man. Oh, and because I'm still on CM staff, I have an announcement. Good friend Jill Rizzo asked me to tell you that Kid Glove is hiring. So kidglove.com, no E, is hiring also. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's good. Solid. All right. I'm a little nervous, guys. I got to admit, I am. Because I, I, get, I got into this predicament by accident. So we're having a Creative Mornings meeting, and we needed a speaker for free. And someone's like, you should do it. I think Kim did. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. You should do it. And then like a couple days later, she's like, we don't have anybody, so you're doing it. <laughs> like, okay, cool. And then at the last event, um, it was announced that, so my month got delayed. And so it, this month was supposed to be kismet. And so during the end of that presentation, I sneak over to Kim and I'm like, I want kismet too. <laughs> Didn't I? I'm like, give me kismet. So I have a line to draw between destiny and being free. I got a bone to pick with kismet. So I took that one too. <clears throat> so this got me into trouble also because this is a quote that I apparently said. I think I first said it to Herbie, Dr. Thompson. We meet quite often and have chats and I have conversations with him and he's taking notes. So I'm like, what the hell, man? What are you doing? Don't write down what I said. So he's like, that was really interesting. Can we go back and talk about? I'm like, what did I say? Apparently, I said this. It's true, but I don't remember saying it. But there's a point to it. When I, when I got to thinking about why I would have said something like that, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I just want to have a conversation with you about this here, albeit a 20-minute one-sided conversation, which anybody who knows me knows that's how a conversation goes. <laughs> it's going to start out with me talking a lot. But I want to start out with destiny, that kismet idea. Kismet gave me no choice in the matter. Destiny gave me no choice in the matter. I like period dramas. I like historical epics and things that make us feel all romantic and brave and chivalrous and all those things. And at the core of most of that is some sort of destiny that told somebody that they belong somewhere. But what about all the people that weren't a part of your destiny, weren't a part of that big win that you were about to have? I grew up as one of those people. I think that's why I like those things so much. It was tough for me to realize that on the surface, I was not destined to be anything more than here. I didn't have a big family name. <clears throat> I didn't have a grand plan. I didn't have money. I didn't have status. I was not a part of society, if you will. I was just a kid from the project. We don't have a lot of destiny in the project because if I lean into destiny, then I would have to admit that I'm destined to be where I was at. I got little ears in the place, so I'm going to keep it clean. But that's BS. So I'm destined to start here? I'm destined to be poor? I'm destined to be black? I'm destined to be unliked, unloved? Well, damn. I didn't get a choice in that. That's hard. That's a hard realization to come to. Growing up thinking that everything I do is going to have to be the biggest win I could ever imagine every single day. 
the pressure of that is crushing. And I did not always win against that. So destiny gave me no choice in the matter. Now we can move to the happier side of destiny, which is serendipity. At least serendipity rewards you with accidental wins based on your choices. You know, you meet a friend at the store. I, I do this all the time. Tell me if you all do this, because this, this stays in my head constantly. I'll, I'll be going to the store. I have to go back in the house. I always forget something like three or four times. My wife li literally just stands at the door, and she waits. And I'm like, oh, and I run back in. Oh, and I run back in. She's like, you're done? Yeah, we get to the car. Oh, babe, pull around. I got to. And then we'll end up going someplace, and it'll be a friend that I haven't seen for 20 years standing in Target at the line. That's cool. That's a cool feeling to think, wow, had I not gone back in the house for that third thing, <laughs> I would have missed that person. So serendipity is destiny light. It's like, OK, you got a few choices you can make. You might run into something good along the way. Don't look for it. Don't ask for it. And be really happy when it shows up. There's still the dark side of that. When bad things happen, so do I still have to be happy about serendipity? My choices put me in front of a freight train. Damn. I feel locked in with these things. I feel as if I can't make the right choice. So again, I'm putting up a barrier. I don't like destiny. Serendipity can kick rocks. Not helping me any. So then that brings me to this notion. Freedom is not free. How many of us have heard that phrase? OK. Mostly implying that there is a cost to freedom. The phrase is correct, but in my estimation, the idea is wrong, at least in my estimation, which you are all here for, so my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about what freedom actually is, <clears throat> I think about like a pet or your yard or something that has a defined barrier. What's up, Dave? <laughs> Sorry, that's just my place, uh, saying hi to my friends. Um, Something that has a defined barrier gives you a confine. A confine does not allow you <clears throat> to feel free, think freely, be in that space. OK, so if freedom is just a state of being, I suppose, I think about my daughter and something that happened with us when she was probably about this little one's age. I ran to the store. I told her, I'm running to the store. Mommy's here with you. She's an only child, so she's got a little anxiety about being in a place alone. Our neighborhood is good. Everyone in the neighborhood knows us. We walk up to the track to work out. We're all over the neighborhood. It's good. It never occurred to me that something like this would happen. So I run to the store. I'm only gone for a few minutes. I tell her I'm only gone for a few minutes, so I know I got to hustle back. Mommy's in the house. You are not alone. Don't worry. She nods. When a kid nods, most of you know they're lying. They, they, <laughs> they don't agree with you. They're like, right, mommy's here. Where are you going again? I get back, and the door is open, and it is a little bit freaky at first. I run through the house. I'm kind of just checking around. OK, she's not there. Let me check the laundry room. Mommy was doing laundry. Maybe she's there. Not there. So I freak out. I'm 0 to 100 immediately. 
I run up the block. I'm at this point screaming her name as loud as I possibly can. And it's, I mean, even right now recounting this story is freaking me out because she was gone. My little girl was gone. Damn, okay, 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 what to do, what to do. At this point, I've covered a lot of ground. I am now up Pacific Street, and I don't know what to do. So every thought you could possibly imagine goes through your head at that point. And the cops are called. I've got a missing kid on my hands now. Now this is a missing person. This is a kidnapping. This is something going on. And then um, a photographer that most of you might know, Scott, Scott Dobry comes. He, he, he sees me. He lives in my area. He drives by. He knows I'm frantic. He says, get in the car. And I'm like, I can't right now. And it, it, I'm not thinking clearly. He says, get in the car. Like, who just drives up to somebody and says, get in the car? I'm like, not right now. <laughs> He's like, get in the car. I see his eyes. And I'm like, ah, he knows where she's at or what happened. He's like, get in the car. I'm freaking out. At the corner of 78th and Pacific, someone is holding my daughter. I'm, I'm good at that point. I'm furious at that point. I'm crying because I'm so happy she's found. I'm scared. Then I know the cops got called. I'm like, oh, damn. I'm black. I ain't even going to lie. That's the first thing that goes to my head. Like, oh, man, I'm black and my kid got out of the house. Damn, how cliche do we look right now? Like, no, 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 no. They get there. It's all cool. It's good. But I tell that story about this leading into the next point because my daughter says to me, you weren't back yet, so I came looking for you. Wow. I'm proud <laughs> and I'm furious. At the time, she was maybe only three years old. And she had no concept of this because no barrier was going to stop her from coming to find dad. So to me, that's why freedom is not free. Because freedom would have been I set her free. I opened up the door, said, hey, you can go. No, that mattered nothing when she made the choice. Okay, so that brings me to what being free, in my estimation, you're here for that, actually is. It's the choice. You hear people say no one can take away your freedom. No, nah, that's a lie. They can take away your freedom. They can confine you. Barriers can be put up and stop you from, or try to stop you from doing what you feel you should be doing. But being free is not just the choice. It's acting on that choice. None of our... None, none of the parents in here would think that their kids are free. <laughs> you are not free. <laughs> How many times do we reinforce that to them? Like, you live in my house, my rules, you know, the old joke of I'll make another one looks just like you. <laughs> kids really don't have any freedom. But damn, if they don't exercise the choice every single minute of every single day. And that story is what got me to thinking about what being free actually is. It's not the definition of, you know, a door opened for you. No, being free would be stepping through it. The door could be open and you could know that you could leave and you still stay. All of us have jobs. We choose to stay in those jobs. My mom used to say that to me. Oh, you can do what you want. There's consequences. <laughs> but you are free to do what you want. She was not lying. I was free to do what I want. Got in trouble a lot for it. But there was the definition. My whole life, the definition was right there. So going all the way back to destiny and 
serendipity and then freedom and what in my estimation is actually being free and why I don't crave freedom. I don't crave someone else giving me the permission to leave, to make a choice, to do what it is I'm supposed to do. I'm only sitting up here right now, <coughs> pardon me, you know, wearing my own clothing line. I don't really have to go to work today if I don't want to. I'm only doing that because I made a choice that the last job I had was the last job I would have. I'm gainfully unemployed now for 17 years. <laughs> and that's a choice. And it's not just that choice, it's exercising that choice every single day. So, I don't crave freedom. I crave the ability and the space to choose and then I crave the actual act of choosing that every single day. And so you all are in various states of freedom, but freedom isn't free. Remember that. When someone says that next time, when you, you know, somebody's rolling by with a truck, America, and, <laughs> and you see a bumper sticker that says that, I want you all to giggle at that because they don't understand what freedom actually is and why freedom isn't free. You're right, but you're saying it wrong. You're thinking about it the wrong way. Freedom is the confine. Freedom is the barrier. Freedom is the box that some of us, all of us, have to exist in at some point in time. But that has no relation to the choices that you make. There are enslaved people who make the choice to revolt to push back, to get away from it. Their freedom is taken away, but their choice of being free is not. That's in here, that's in here. I want you to take that with you and hopefully I mess up some of your plans because now you're gonna be thinking, am I being free? That's coming from a guy who's married with a kid. <laughs> There's no freedom. <laughs> that part sailed for me but the choice I tell my wife that I'll end on that that's a good point it's a laugh but it's also very true I tell my wife I don't need you I want you so, so having that boyish freedom to go and do as I please nope because I'm married nope because I have a kid nope I was late showing up today because I had to drop my kid off. And I told Kim, I said, I, she's like, we can have somebody do it. Nope. It's my job. We can move the event back. Nope. I'll be there on time. It's my job. Because that's my choice. And we had a good talk in the morning. I sing crazy songs and I laugh at her. I said, you can sing that to your friends. She's like, stop that. <laughs> no. Freedom is not free. I crave being free.